Tuesday. Lieutenant Commander Hart reporting for duty. Jonathan's call to active duty. I'm going to open up Pandora. And needs the right stuff. We're about to make it the fifth breakthrough of the decade. Just to stay alive on Heart to Heart. Tuesday on ABC. Coming up next on Eyewitness News, the search continues for survivors of the bombing of the U.S. Marine headquarters in Lebanon. Meanwhile, Minnesota families and friends of Marines stationed in Beirut are undergoing the excruciating process of waiting for word about their loved ones. The incident has brought the policies of the Reagan administration under fire tonight. We'll have reaction from Minnesota's congressional delegation. We'll have those stories, the rest of the day's news, and the weather and sports coming up next on the Eyewitness News Update. Crown Auto and Valvoline present the winds of winter. Winter, we do not tremble at your coming. Crown Auto tires, batteries, and antifreeze will rise up and defeat you. Our wonderful cars will never say die. I defy you to give me your coldest blast of Arctic air right here in the notes. I defy you. I really do. Crown Auto shall take victory from your icy grasp. Complicated fastening jobs are really quite simple with the Pop Brand Rivet Tool. A Pop Brand Rivet quickly replaces a stripped screw. Won't shake loose like a nut and bolt. And fastens from one side on metals and leathers. So don't put off tough fastening jobs. I fixed it. Until it's too late. Simply put it all together. With the Pop Brand Rivet Tool from the Bostic Consumer Division of M Hart. Panasonic invites you to step ahead of your time to a Panasonic video camera that focuses automatically and adjusts to light, even low light, to a stereo video recorder that records from TV or from life with forehead technology for jitter-free effects from slow motion to stop motion. Step ahead of your time to a Panasonic Omnivision video system, more than just slightly ahead of our time. Floor, meteorologist Dave Dahl, and Larry Burnett with sports. This is Eyewitness News. Good evening. Not since Vietnam has the news been so bad. At least 147 U.S. servicemen are known dead. They were called peacekeepers in a country which has actually known little peace. And tonight, under floodlights, rescue teams picked through what was the four-story Marine headquarters, dubbed by the Marines who slept there, the Beirut Hilton. A driver on a suicide mission destroyed this building. Another driver took at least nine French lives at another barracks. ABC's Al Dale reports. It happened while most were asleep, it being Sunday morning when sleeping in is allowed. But this Sunday morning, suddenly a red truck came speeding through a Marine checkpoint, accelerating as it crashed through two barriers and went around the third before plowing into the lobby of the building. The truck, carrying an estimated 2,000 pounds of TNT, blew up with the driver inside. Colonel Tim Garrity, the Marine commander here, said the terrorist attack would not keep his men from doing their job. That these, these kind of things just harden our resolve and that uh, we will continue to do what we came here to do, and that is to provide assistance for a free and independent Lebanon. Bodies of the dead, along with the severely wounded, were taken to helicopters waiting at a nearby section of the airport. Slowly and carefully, they moved them so they could be flown to U.S. Navy ships lying just offshore. Some of the injured were brought back after treatment on the ship to be flown to medical facilities in West Germany. As the digging and searching went on, the Marines came under sniper fire, causing them to go on alert and take cover. The second suicide terrorist attack occurred at a French military headquarters about a mile away, only two minutes after the Marine explosion. This time, security was all but non-existent. A bomb-laden truck reportedly pulled into the underground garage and exploded. The nine-story apartment block collapsed on scores of French paratroopers asleep inside. Rescuers pulled at least one survivor from beneath heavy concrete slabs. His screams had led them to him and told of his immense pain. Until this, the French had lost 17 men since coming here more than a year ago. No one knew this morning that the initial figure of 25 dead would grow by day's end. And still, they searched. Al Dale, ABC News, Beirut. As Al Dale reported there, the wounded were airlifted immediately, some flown to nearby ships, others to American hospitals in Italy and West Germany. 
24 of the most seriously wounded were taken to Rhine Main Air Force Base near Frankfurt. One Marine did not make it. Officials report that 11 Marines have either undergone surgery or are waiting for emergency surgery. President Reagan has been meeting most of the day with his advisors, trying to determine what U.S. action will be taken in the wake of this attack. The president cut short his golfing weekend in Augusta, Georgia, and rushed back to Washington in a driving rain to pledge that his policies will not change. These deeds make so evident the bestial nature of those who would assume power if they could have their way and drive us out of that area that we must be more determined than ever that they cannot take over that vital and strategic area of the earth or for that matter any other part of the earth. After an extraordinarily long meeting with his security council this afternoon, the president sent word through White House spokesman Larry Speaks that those who would weaken U.S. resolve to bolster the Lebanese government will not succeed. And tonight, two to three hundred Marines left Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, to replace their fallen comrades in Beirut. Their morale was said to be at fever pitch. But President Reagan wants to ensure they are protected. He's also dispatched Marine Commandant General Paul Kelly to Beirut to determine how American troops can be kept safe from future attacks. A group which calls itself the Free Islamic Revolution Movement is taking credit for that pre-dawn attack stamp. But, Marcia, Secretary of State Caspar Weinberger believes circumstantial evidence, anyway, points now to Iran. Weinberger says intelligence sources believe recent sniper attacks have come from Iranians in Beirut, and he says today's bombings are almost a mirror of the bombing of the U.S. Embassy some months ago at the hands of the Iranians. A speculation about the attack has led to calls for action. Former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger, on This Week with David Brinkley, said that U.S. forces can't help bring peace to Lebanon by simply sitting there. I was not in favor of sending American forces to Beirut to begin with. I've been saying for months we either have to do more or less if we are doing it as a solitary American effort. There is no sense having American forces that cannot make a decisive difference to the situation. I would now, in the present circumstances, like to make a decisive difference. And I do not favor a withdrawal of American forces in the circumstances that have arisen. But I also believe that if we continue to sit there passively, if all the other forces that could be on our side are passive, we will see a gradual disintegration of the uh, Lebanese government, and we would have seen it without this outrage today. This outrage gives us an opportunity to take a new look at the situation, and it should be used for that purpose. Minnesota lawmakers have called for the president to take a new look at U.S. policies in Lebanon. We'll have a report on that, and we'll take a look at two Minnesota families with relatives in Lebanon when we return. October is Plowed Minnesota's 20th birthday. You bet you can, and during October, we're offering great savings on kitchens. Like Marilette's Horizon, a new introduction is 40% off. Homestead Oak is 37% off. Beautiful Meadow Oak is 36% off. And with Thorpe Financing, there's no interest or payments for 90 days. And Trak and Gilliam's New Accent Floor, the no-wax floor designed for the do-it-yourselfer. We guarantee a goof-proof installation or we'll give you a new piece free. Plowed Minnesota, 20 years old, and still direct from the factory to you. We're going to take a bite out of this apple to make a point. When your company has a Delta Dental Plan, your family can have regular dental checkups and other necessary dental services, yet you'll probably never see a big dental bill again. And that's the point. With Delta Dental, you can continue to take good, healthy bites out of things you like to eat without having dental costs take big bites out of you. Isn't it time you had a Delta Dental Plan where you work? Brown Clothing 66th Anniversary Sale is now underway. Since 1917, Brown's has earned a reputation for offering first quality clothing at a better value. Take advantage of anniversary savings that are 20 to 50% below our everyday low prices. Save on suits, dress shirts, sweaters, cashmere and all-weather coats, active sportswear, slacks, shoes, and more, including our famous big and tall clothing. Even at these low anniversary prices, you'll receive Brown's free alterations and fine after-sale service. Brown's Clothing, 6th and the Nicollet Mall, downtown Minneapolis. Roses are red, violets are blue. You don't buy a hot hero, and I'm going to come looking for you. 8th District Congressman James Oberstar blasted the Reagan administration for its policies in Beirut and said that un unless things change, the tragedy could be repeated. We cannot any longer to continue to jeopardize an elite force in the blind hope that things will get better in Lebanon. 
But this will be only one of a number of repeated attempts to provoke a disproportionate reaction by the United States, whether na by naval bombardment, air strikes, uh, or beyond perimeter uh, search and destroy missions by a ground force that probably will be augmented in the coming days. In other reaction from Minnesota, Minnesota lawmakers on the bombing, bombing in Lebanon, Congressman Jerry Sikorsky, who voted against a Marine presence there, says the hostile situation in Lebanon is beyond our control and he knew a catastrophe was going to happen. Congressman Martin Sabo of the 5th District in Minneapolis says future U.S. involvement is a major question and he would hope that the administration will reassess its role. And 3rd District Congressman Bill Frenzel says if we cannot provide better security, it certainly ought to be time to begin to talk to our allies about withdrawal. Senator Dave Durenberger, who supports the presence of Marines in Lebanon, said the ease of the attack was devastating. I know why, why we were there in the beginning. I have less, uh, uh, less confidence in what we're doing there now, but uh, I am committed to our being there. And the larger problem is how long are we going to stay there with an insufficient amount of, uh, of multinational troops? Well, families, friends, and relatives of Marines stationed in Beirut are waiting for word tonight on the names of those killed in the blast, but Pentagon and Marine officials say it's going to take time. There are 28 Marines from Minnesota based with the U.S. peacekeeping force in Lebanon, and we have reports from Jason Davis and Pat Milan on how two of those families are coping tonight. At homes all over Minnesota, like this one at Prior Lake, families are waiting for news of their sons or loved ones in Beirut. When word of the bombing first reached Mrs. Mary Lou Zierhut, she broke down and cried. But theirs is one of the few families that now know the fate of their son. Somehow, Lance Corporal Rick Zierhut got word out to a friend in Italy, and a call mid-morning to his family in Minnesota told them he was fine. He told us to call and tell you he's all right. And that's all we know. We haven't, uh, we haven't heard from Ricky, but that's enough, you know, that's better than most people right now. The Zierhuts are probably unique in that they know that their son Rick is safe and sound in Beirut. But for the rest of the families, like the Prentices here in South Minneapolis, well, they have no idea whether their nephew Jeffrey Graham is alive or dead. Private First Class Jeffrey Graham of South Minneapolis is an orphan and lists his next of kin as his aunt, Mary Prentice. Mrs. Prentice was too distraught to allow a television interview but did agree to talk to us while we looked at photographs of her nephew. He was a great sportsman, and he played hockey. He went to uh, Southwest. And he said, what would you think if I told you that I'd like to join the Marines? While families all over the country wait for news, Mary Lou Zierhut is forming a support group for Minnesota families with relatives in Beirut. She says she has mixed feelings about the conflict and her son's part in it. You see, Mary Lou Zierhut is Lebanese. Jason Davis, Channel 5, Eyewitness News. 21-year-old Galen Weber of Waite Park near St. Cloud is one of several Minnesota Marines doing a tour of duty in Beirut. The building that was destroyed overnight is where he should have been sleeping when the attack occurred. But his family really doesn't know what happened to him. In June, Howard and Alice Weber got a letter from their son saying that he had actually moved out of the building. Well, when he was first over there, they were stationed in that building. And then they didn't like the living conditions in there, so they moved out, him and several other fellows moved out, as you've seen in the pictures with the, that he had sent when they moved into this tent. That letter and the picture of the tent are the Weber's only hope for now. They can only hope Galen was far enough away from the explosion and the building to survive the attack. Galen Weber is one of 13 children. He joined the Marines after high school in 1980 because the job market was so bad. His family was worried about him going to Lebanon last Christmas, but Galen assured his mother he would be all right. Now the family finds themselves huddled around the television set, wondering if he really is all right. In the last letters, Galen told his family the fighting in Lebanon had gotten intense. Well, lately it has, in the last month or so. Because he kept saying, I, I wrote and told him to keep his head down, you know, attack him. He says, well, that's all I do is keep my head down. The family did not find the talk of diplomats, officials, and presidents comforting during their anxious wait today. The Webbers do not want the president to interpret the deaths of Marines as a sign that the U.S. should have a strong commitment in Lebanon. 
what their mission is in the first place over there. I don't understand. And he says there's not going to be no change in it. Uh, it don't make sense to me. The Weber's hope no one comes to call because no word is a good sign. As Howard Weber says, they don't call to tell you nothing's wrong. Pat Milan, Channel 5, Eyewitness News. Once again, to recap the information as we have it right now, the U.S. State Department says that the number of dead American Marines and Navy men now stands at 147. That is the greatest loss of life suffered by U.S. military forces since the Vietnam War. And at least nine French members of the peacekeeping force were also killed in a separate suicide bombing today. Marcham? Well, we'll be back with more news and weather in just a moment. Isn't it time to set yourself free from the bind of storm windows for low maintenance and painting? This area's number one replacement window specialist can free you from the yearly problems and dangers of window maintenance. J.J. Grundy presents the exclusive line of Grundy Guard windows. That's why Grundy Guard windows are America's number one replacement window. J.J. Grundy will tailor the window to fit your home and budget. When you call the number at the bottom of your screen, you are assured of this area's replacement window leader. J.J. Grundy offers the finest in sales, service, and installation. Plus, by calling now, you'll qualify for a special limited time offer. Call now and qualify for a $50 trade-in on each of your old windows. J.J. Grundy, the number one replacement specialist who received the Image of the Year Award from the National Association of the Remodeling Industry. Call J.J. Grundy now. Receive $50 trade for each of your old windows and do away with window maintenance forever. Save energy costs and add value and beauty to your home. Call now. There's no obligation. J.J. Grundy didn't become number one by accident. There ain't nothing like going home to a place you call your own. It'll give you a feeling like no other known. Take the tour of the beautiful model homes now on display at all five locations of Mobile Home Minnesota, one of the largest companies providing manufactured homes throughout the Northwest region. There ain't nothing like going home to a place you call your own. They have the homes, the financing, tax advantages, and great locations you've been looking for at Mobile Home Minnesota. Word tonight out of Chicago that a tentative agreement has been reached between striking teachers and the school board. Some 27,000 teachers took to the picket lines three weeks ago. Nearly half a million students have been out of school since, since then. Tonight's tentative agreement was reached only after a marathon negotiating session that lasted 33 hours. We don't have any details of that agreement. The pact will now go to a vote of the full union membership. A union spokesman says that will take at least a day, so Chicago's youngsters probably won't be back in school until Tuesday at the earliest. Sam? Well, members of the anti-nuclear group called the Honeywell Protest plan to demonstrate tomorrow at the Honeywell Company headquarters in South Minneapolis. But when they get there, when they arrive, they'll find things have changed since their last protest there last spring. Fences were installed around the complex today in an effort to keep the protesters off company property. The Honeywell Project group will also hear some opposing voices tomorrow. A group called the American Patriotic Coalition plans to show its support of Honeywell's role as a defense contractor. Police say they are prepared to make up to 500 arrests out there tomorrow. Let's talk about today with Dave Dahl. Well, it was kind of gloomy. Oh, issue. yeah. Got a we, little bit of sunshine this afternoon. That felt good. But we really blew it. Yeah, we really yeah. blew it. We had a lot of fog, and we've got fog, fog developing tonight. out there tonight. Bad again. I hear. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's really dense in some areas. And right now at the airport, visibility is three-eighths of a mile. 44 for today's high, well below average. This morning's low, it's thanks to clear skies, 37 degrees, and officially a dry day, even though there was a little bit of drizzle in and around the cities. Currently, with that fog, we have 40 degrees. Of course, the dew point matches that, giving us 100% relative humidity. It is saturated outside. The wind's southeast now at 5 miles per hour. The barometer on the rise at 30.05. That fog seemed to like east central Minnesota throughout the day. There is what it looked like this morning. Now watch as the hours rolled ahead. That just sat right over the Twin Cities area. Even though it was dissipating to the north and south of the metro, it just sat over east central Minnesota, and that's where the cool highs were around the country. Just a pocket of 40s. We were one of the coolest spots in the whole upper Midwest. 40 degree highs in east central Minnesota. While down a little bit of sunshine in south central South Dakota, they pushed their highs up into the 70s. Even a few 80s popped up in the west central part of Nebraska. That warm air is not going to get here thanks to a cool front. This one's got some punch. It was moving rapidly yesterday, decided to slow down just enough to keep the clouds over Minnesota. But out to the west, a lot of snow is developing, possibly even a half a foot in portions of Wyoming and Colorado. And as that front moves into Minnesota, it's finally going to cook or kick that wet system off the east coast. A lot of water has been forming. They've had over a half a foot of rain in Winfield, West Virginia. And it's still raining. The national radar map right now 
shows a lot of wetness all the way from New England right down into the southeast. Still some scattered shower activity even down as far as Florida. While most of that heavy rain is now pushing up into New, New England, the midsection of the country is pretty much rain-free. Out to the west, there's that scattered snow shower activity that's starting to develop. And the front that's carrying all that activity is going to move into Minnesota. By tomorrow afternoon, we're going to see showers start to develop over the state. And that'll keep the clouds over the cities. And don't be too surprised if you see a little bit of snow mixed in, because there's quite a bit of cool air building up behind that front. By Tuesday, there's a little bit of light in the tunnel as we see a high-pressure system slide into Minnesota. That'll finally kick the clouds out of the state, but the cool air is still going to be around. The reason for the cool air are the upper winds. They're going to dip down right across the upper Midwest. Warmth is starting to build up way out to the west, and that warm air will probably get here by Wednesday. The forecast in detail for the Twin Cities is calling for partly cloudy. There will be areas of dense fog tonight, lows of 37 to 41. East winds at 5 to 10 for tomorrow. Call it mostly cloudy, a day like today. Showers possible late. Highs of only 47 to 51 with southeast winds. The outlook for Monday night into Tuesday, showers possible. And as I said, there could be a few flakes mixed in as we have right here. Lows of 34 to 37 <laughs> Tuesday, partly cloudy and cool. High of only 47 to 50, but look at this good news. 61 maybe by Wednesday, 63 by Thursday, and a few showers mixed mm -hmm. in. Well, here's tomorrow's weather word right there. That's, that's <laughs> about something <laughs> that Yeah, sure. Okay. Marcia, quickly. Okay, folks, it's 12 minutes after 12, which means it's tomorrow, but for Larry, it's still today because there was lots of sports. Oh, today was a good day, even if it was yesterday. In sports, a dramatic finish in today's, yesterday's New York City Marathon. The Vikings came up with a dramatic finish of their own, and there was plenty of wrestling tonight in St. Paul. This is worth staying awake for, folks. Hurry up, Ram Ranch. Your future daughter-in-law will be here in 10 minutes. Give me strength. You got it. I just broke the record for getting dirty. Give me strength. You got it. Extra Strength Shield. The deodorant soap with lather so thick, so rich, you'll feel fresher, cleaner than ever before. Big night tonight. See you. Half an hour. Oh, give me strength. You got it. Extra Strength Shield. The Give Me Strength Deodorant Soap. Thanks to Pepperidge Farm, you don't have to go all the way to France to get a great croissant. Introducing new Pepperidge Farm croissants. Make special for you right here in America. Crisp and flaky outside, soft and pulley inside, rich with creamery butter. Try new Pepperidge Farm croissants. Butter, walnut, almond, cinnamon, and raisin. All buttery, fresh, and flaky. Cause Pepperidge Farm remembers. Magnifique. Akarok. Beautiful crystal clear tableware, very right for romantic dining. And being made of tempered glass, it's twice as resistant to shocks as ordinary glass. Certainly a dishwasher won't hurt it. Arcorock, affordable crystal clear French design tableware that's perfect for breakfasts, casual lunches, or buffets. And for romantic dinners. Arcorock. Clean that muddy dirt, Sue. Sue doesn't know she's getting Biz Bleach. Biz is bleach. Plus, energized cleaners liquids don't have. They're so white uh -huh. and bright. What was that bleach? Biz Bleach. Biz Bleach? <gasps> I better get some. Or a smaller dog. <laughs> discover Biz Bleach and discover a clean whitewash. Well, let's get rid of the football news so we can get right on to pro rap. <laughs> <laughs> Why not, huh? Sudden death turned into sudden victory for the Minnesota Vikings today in Green Bay. Benny Ricardo's field goal in overtime lifted the Vikings to a dramatic 20-17 to win over the Packers. Now, the victory gives the Vikes a two-game cushion in the Central Division. For more on that game, Rob Lear reports from Green Bay. On a Sunday, the football looked at times hard to handle. The Vikings managed to hang on to beat Green Bay. John Swain's first quarter interception turned the ball over to the Viking offense who in turn handed the ball off to Ted Brown. This dash went for 43 yards, Teddy's longest from scrimmage for the year. The play set up this Steve Bills to Sammy White.